Everyone around me seems to fit. They seem connected to something, something I am not. The original Ghost in the Shell starts with a human brain being put into a machine ape body. And that, to me, as a filmmaker, was an exciting kind of dynamic to explore. What does that brain still think? What does that brain still remember? Can you reprogram a human brain? The movie questions the value of past and memories to define who we are. In becoming so dependent on technology for their own enhancement, humans have sort of forgotten or are losing their sense of self. I actually see something that it's probably gonna be within the next generation. So in my mind, it's a very realistic world. It's extraordinary to think that this film may become the seminal statement on what that integration of humanity and technology really means for us as a human race in this incredible world of Ghost in the Shell. There's no one who really understands the risk to individuality, identity, messing with the human soul. Ghost in the Shell, I think, means a lot of things, but your ghost is your spirit, your true self, the self that can travel from vessel to vessel, and the shell would be your physical body. And in this case, it would be the body that Major has been given, her cyborg body, and her ghost, her spirit, is her brain, her human brain, and all that comes with that. It feels like there's always this thick fog over my memory, and I can't see through. You're lucky. Every single day I get screwed up in my memories. It's better to be pure, like you. One of the things that Ghost in the Shell does tap into is the questions about the self and where the self lives in a world where everything is accessible and interconnected. If I lose all my past, all my memories, all my photographs, what is left of me then? Have I lost part of me? The Major links her humanity to her memories. This idea that if I can remember my life before being in this shell, if I can remember even being born, that will prove to myself that I am actually human. We cling to memories as if they define us, but what we do is what defines us. Dr. Ule is an incredible scientist who's able to put a human brain into a machinate body. She has an interesting dilemma, and this is something Julia and I discussed at length. Her brother died when she was very young and she watched him die and there was nothing she could do about it. She describes it beautifully in this, she saw this butterfly leaving him. And then with Major, she caught this butterfly and she put it in a glass jar. It's all imagination, even though scientists today, they're really trying to see how far they can go with this, you know, what can we take of the human being and make it to a robot and how can we use them? I mean, there's the questions that really are very alive and happening. Why can't I feel my body? Mira, your body was damaged. We couldn't save it. Only your brain survived. She's the first individual that has her ghost in an artificial shell of various interesting materials. There's a very interesting philosophy that's explored through the major. She doesn't know if she's a human or a robot. I mean, she knows she has this human brain, but her body is entirely manufactured. And one of the themes the movie is examining is wherein lies the essence of, of a human. I can see everything. All of your thoughts, your decisions. I guess privacy is just for humans. You are human. She is a conflicted character and a troubled character the character that doesn't necessarily know the answers. Who are you? I don't know. As she journeys down the road, she starts to understand not only what she is, but who she was before. That gets into the ideas of dualism and whether the mind and the body can be separate. Your shell belongs to them, but not your ghost. Your ghost is yours. Remember that and maybe you can remember it all. Michael Pitt plays Kuze, who is a sort of mirror for the Major to kind of reflect upon. He shares a life experience with her that they are both uncovering. We had nothing except each other. He took that from us. 
she's completely enraptured by him. You were born of lessons took from, from, from my failure. What are you talking about? Sort of inexplicable until she discovers the truth about her own identity and in relationship to his character. And I think he too is drawn to her and her identity, her journey, who is she? What a beauty you are. They have improved us so much since they made me. It's been really intense developing that relationship just because of the depth of it. What is that? I can't remember, but I am haunted by it. Do you see it? Kuze is a combination between the puppet master, the laughing man, and Kuze, the character from the animated series. They sort of did a, an integration of these three characters so that the audience can see all the things that they knew, but see it in a different way. Come with me into my network. We will evolve beyond them. Stephen Hawking said that AI was the last and greatest human invention. Humanizing some of the AI elements in the film, I think, is important because when we're able to create an AI that is so close to being human that it doesn't know itself that it's not human, I think there is going to be a merger where it essentially is human. What's interesting is Batu has a really fascinating line in the movie. He says, what's the difference? What's the difference are fantasy, reality, dreams, memories. It's all the same, just noise. Just noise. And I think at the end of the day, his take on it is, is that it doesn't really matter. The fact that you're even asking the question probably means that you are human, and maybe that's enough. She's more than human and more than AI. We changed her entire identity, but her ghost survived. The film doesn't really seek to provide too many answers to that, but what it does seek to do is to pose the questions and try to get people to think a little bit about what it means. What is the essence of humanity? Where does it lie? I think this is a question that philosophers have been asking for hundreds and hundreds of years. I do not consent to the deletion of this data. We never needed your consent. Our film is a very interesting metaphor of where we are today and how we are letting ourselves be entirely consumed by technology. My four-year-old daughter. The time it took her to sing that lullaby, she learned to speak fluent French. We are adopting technology like a new skin. We wear it every day as we go forward in society, and uh, it's become ubiquitous with the way that we interact with everything around us. How does our ghost, how does our essence survive? I think that's why the major makes such a great focal point for a lot of those discussions and those debates. She really does represent the pinnacle of advancement. So she allows us to examine the fears that we have. Hey, sweetheart, Move. you want an upgrade? Move. I have any Back off! I think there are genuine concerns as technology progresses, as the world moves forward, about being interconnected, and that once everybody is connected, where does the self lie? Do you lose some of yourself? Do you start to lose control as where your own self ends and the world begins? My parents, the way they died, did that happen? No. Nothing I have is real. This movie has the opportunity to hold a mirror to humanity like no other. You had a, a main character, a superhero, whose deep down fear was that she's not actually human, that she is an AI program. And as a storyteller, it allows you to really get directly into a, the innate question of all films, which is, you know, what does it mean to be human? I think the audience, and certainly even myself as the audience, wants to connect with this kind of story. We want to place ourselves in the character's plight in their experience and live the journey through them, because I think that's the magic of connecting with film. I was never in a terrorist bombing. My parents, everything was data they installed in my mind. You know, we're trying to be hopeful about technology, and that to me is what a lot of what our film's about. If you parent technology properly and you keep the humanity to it, then, then it, it can be a great thing. You human? Yeah. Technology can't just overwrite humanity. We will still exist in some way or form, 
And I think that's really what Major's character goes through, a kind of a metamorphosis. What does that feel like? It feels different. A lot of sci-fi looks to the dark side of machines, but I think that we will coexist with them and our humanity can and should survive. Try and understand your importance, Mir. You're what everyone will become one day. You don't know how alone that makes me feel.